In this video, I thought I'd talk about a couple of easier items to make for my Kawasaki Z1 Super 6. So I'm going to make the sprocket cover, where I have to modify it to make it wider. And I'm going to make the starter motor extension cover from stainless steel. Show you some of the techniques and methods I use. The first thing I have to do to the sprocket cover is clean off the oxidation and tarnishing using wet and dry paper and water out in the garden. In the bright sunshine during lockdown, it's a perfect thing to do. Once the sprocket cover was all clean, I went out in my shed, found a little sheet of aluminium to cut out a piece that I'm going to weld onto the sprocket cover to extend it by about two inches. So I cut out a rough rectangle at this stage because I'll be taking it back into the garage, bending it and then welding it to the cover. Back in the garage, I got my little bit of plate that I just cut out, offered it up to the engine to see that it was big enough. As you can see, it's straight, it needs to be curved, and it also needs to be contoured to fit the side of the engine. To put the curve in the sheet of aluminium, I gripped it in my vise and just pulled it by hand. It's quite stiff, but I managed to do it. The next thing I did was make a cardboard template of the sprocket cover to get the profile that I can transfer to the sheet of aluminium that I cut out. Then using a marker pen, I scribed the line. Back in the shed, I used my bandsaw to cut out the piece following the line I described earlier. With the piece trimmed to size, I clamped it to the actual engine casing using a piece of square steel and two clamps, then TIG welded, where well, I actually tacked it in place with a couple of TIG welds on the engine with it all bolted up, and then transferred it to my vise to complete the weld. Once the welding was complete, I transferred the sprocket cover back onto the engine and did up the four screws tight. Then using my hammer, I gently teased the edge around so it matched the profile of the crankcases. Once this was done, I offered up the starter motor cover to check the profile. And there, at the edge, you can see a gap, which I need to fill with some weld and then shape afterwards using a file. Before I filled in the gap with weld, I decided I would actually file up the previous weld and smooth that all down. Because if you leave it all to the end, it can be a bit laborious filing all the welds down at once. It's nice to sort of spread it out. So and then I used some Abronet cloth, which is amazing like sandpaper. Doesn't, it just doesn't clog, you can use it for ages. You use that by hand to sort of blend in the surface and make it nice and smooth. It's just a first stage at 120 grit. Then, offer the cover back up, put the starter cover back on again, just have a quick look before I do that last weld in there. After building up the edge with weld, I used my very coarse file to shape and profile the edge to match the gap that I had before by memory and eye really, but you just keep filing until it looks about right. Then you can offer the engine casing back up and have a look. After a bit of filing, it was time to offer the casing back up to check for the fit. I first fitted the four screws to make sure it's held back tight in place. And once they were tight, I fitted the starter motor cover back on loosely to have a look at the gap and I was pleased that everything looked fine and it's how I wanted it. Then back out in the garden in the bright sunshine to do some cleaning up to the next stage. So I have to use wet and dry paper 320 grade, rub it all down all over then go down to 400, 600 and end up with a thousand before I can go back in my shed to give it a good old buff on my buffer.
With the polishing complete, it was time to go back in the garage and assemble the sprocket cover with all its parts, the clutch operating mechanism, the sound deadening mechanism, and the gasket and cover. The first thing to go into the sprocket casing is the clutch operating mechanism. It's held in place with two screws. Once the screws are tight, the next thing I fitted was the sound deadening material and its metal gauze cover. This is held in with five screws. The next thing I did was fit two new seals for the gear shaft. It's strange on the Kawasaki Z1 because it has a seal on both sides, so it's important to put some grease in between them to keep it lubricated. That's the first one in. Now we turn it over and repeat on this side with another seal, gently tapping in square. Then using a bit of ZX1 extra lube grease and a screwdriver, I put some grease between the two seals just to lubricate the shaft. With the sprocket cover assembled, it's time to fit it to the engine, carefully engaging the gear chain shaft through the new seals and doing up the four screws tight. Then using a flat blade screwdriver and a 12mm socket, I set the clearance on the clutch push rod. So it's just got a little bit of a wiggle when it's tight and that's all done ready. Then a new gasket, the polished cover and two new screws completes that side. With the starter motor cover fitted, it's time to make the extending cover at the back, which I'm going to make out of one and a half millimetre thick stainless steel, using these two pillars in the centre to hold it on with two screws. So the first thing I need to do is get a piece of cardboard and make a template by inserting it underneath the starter motor cover, drawing round the profile at the end of the starter motor cover, and then rubbing round with my finger to make an impression on the card, which is going to be the profile of the um, engine casing. From this, I can transfer that size across to a piece of stainless steel, cut it out with my tin snips. With the cardboard template cut out, I place it on my stainless steel sheet and draw around the edge with my marker pen. Then, using my tin snips, cut out the shape. With the part cut out, I take it out into the garden, into the sunshine, to use my angle grinder with a flapper wheel to profile the edges and clean it up and deburr it. With the edges deburred, I just check that it fits the starter motor cover, which it does nicely. So I then go back in the garage, fit the starter motor cover back on, offer up the cover so it makes sure that it fits nice, which it does. Now the edges are overhanging a little bit, because I'll be turning those over shortly and drilling two holes in the centre. The first thing I need to do is bend a 90 degree angle on one of the sides of my cover plate. To do this, I grip it tightly in the vise, pull it over by hand, and then finish it off with a hammer. After a quick check, I returned it to the vise and completed the bend to make sure it was 90 degrees. With the first bend complete, I offered it up to the engine and it slid lovely in place and engaged perfectly with the starter motor cover. 
I then used a steel rule to, and a marker pen to mark a line for the next bend. I then placed the cover back in the vise to complete the second bend. First checking that the scribe line was exactly in line with the vice jaws, so I get a nice crease and a nice bend. With the second edge bent over, the cover slid nicely onto the engine engaged with the starter motor cover. A quick mark with a pen, it initiates where I have to cut with the hacksaw so that the cover will miss the back of the engine casing. Then using my tin snips to cut out the little tiny segment With the section cut out, the cover will now slide in place and engage down tight onto the crankcases. So my next job is to bend over the last bend. This can be quite tricky because it has to engage nicely with the starter motor and also nicely with the engine. So I used a block of aluminium that fits nicely between the other two bends to hold it in my vise to allow me to bend over the third bend using my hammer. With the third bend complete, I removed it from the vise to have a look, and it all looks great. But the corners need to be radiused, and at the moment they're not radiused. But this is quite easy to do. The cover fits nicely and engages on all three sides, but as you can see, the corners look horrible, and I need to do something with that. But that's very easy to do using a socket that's the correct radius that you need to just rest it on top and check. And if it's the correct radius, we can use that to form the corners. To make the corners nice and radiused, I place the socket in the corner, grip it tight in the vise, and using my hammer, just bend the metal over. Keep going until you get a nice radius. And there you go. Pull the socket out and we've got a lovely radius. But the metal sticks down quite a lot on the underside which needs trimming off. But that's very easy to do with my tin snips. A quick try on the engine and it fits lovely and the curb is absolutely perfect. So now at the right at the back is a wire comes out from the oil pressure switch. So I need to file half a hole to match the half hole in the engine. So I just mark that with a pen, take it across to my vise and file it out with a round file. <laughs> With the half hole filed, it's time to mark out the two central holes that, for the screws to hold the copper plate on. To do this, I placed two M5 countersunk screws into the M6 threads they just dropped in. Then, using a bit of paint, drop a bit of paint on top of each screw, then put the cover on, press down. When you lift it off, you've got two dots. Using a centre punch, find the centre of the paint, give it a tap. Do the second one, and it's all ready for drilling. 
Now drilling, I use these special drills for sheet metal. They're absolutely brilliant because they start off small and they gradually get bigger and bigger and bigger and you stop at the size that you want. But the main thing is they don't grab and they don't throw the job around everywhere. If you use an ordinary drill on sheet metal, it just grabs and shoots through too quick. This is just a nice way of doing that. With the holes drilled, I trail fitted the cover back onto the engine and the screws went in lovely. With the cover finished, it was time to go back out into the garden in the bright afternoon sunshine and do some polishing. But before I can buff the stainless steel on my buffer, I need to rub it up with some 320, 400, 600 and 1000 grade wet and dry paper. With that done, straight back into my shed onto my old buffer and give it a good shine. With the cover polished, I returned to the garage and fitted it to the engine. <clears throat> then gave it a quick wipe over to remove my greasy fingerprints so I could stand back and admire it. I was really pleased how it's turned out.